All right, cool. All right, guys. So the first thing uh, everyone should sign up for is the uh, Google Classroom. So this will allow me to uh, keep track of your grades just to kind of show you guys what it looks like on my end for like a class that's already started is you'll see the assignments here. And then once I see like missing assignments, I can address them with you individually. So that'll be something like, oh, someone's missing an assignment. I'm like, oh, it's because they missed the first couple days of class um, or they're they need to catch up and things like that. And it also allows me to let your IS teachers know how you're doing in the class. Um, the thing I like about the Google Classroom that I'm always going to try to keep towards the top is it has my phone number in case you guys need to talk to me directly or send a text message. Uh, there's the remind here, which I would like all of you guys to add because in case there's something that happens, like let's say... Um, I'm sick or something and I really need to cancel class, this is the fastest way for me to let you guys know. Um, also make sure that you guys are checking your student emails regularly, not just for me, but for your other teachers and everything. It just helps out. And this Calendly link, um, I'm not, I don't think any of you have ever made an appointment with me, but the Calendly link is special because let's say you know you need to make an appointment with me for math. You can click this. It opens up this calendar and let's say you're like, I did not understand what was going on in class. So I need to make an appointment for Tuesday. You can pick a time anywhere on here. And these are only my open slots. So you might notice that the nine o'clock slot is missing. And the reason why the nine o'clock slot's missing is because I have a class at that time. Um, so you'll be able to only pick times that's available or if someone else picks a time, you won't be able to book that time. So you'll just click here, click confirm. It's gonna ask you for your name, your student email, uh, the reason why you do an appointment, and then your phone number. And the phone number is only there so I can text you real quick and be like, hey, um, I'm already in the chat. Why aren't you here? And what this does is if you go to your calendar, so let's say you're at your Google Calendar. Hey, Hector, how's it going? So when you make the Google Calendar appointment or the Calendly appointment, on your Google Calendar, it'll create this special appointment link where you can just click join as soon as the time pops up based on whatever time you pick. So this will allow you to make appointments a lot easier. And if you've already accepted the Google Calendar invite for the cohort, so for example, our algebra cohort, you can just go to your Google Calendar, click join, and you won't have to keep track of that link forever. It also works for your IS teachers. So using your Google Calendar, when you're signed into your student account is really important. I have other emails, um, but I'm always signed into my work email just because it keeps my Google Calendar open. And if I go to meet.google.com, it keeps all my appointments here. So after this class, I have to do the pre-calculus cohort. And then after that, I have an appointment with someone named Vince. So all of them will be here if I go to just meet.google.com. And again, this is going to be on that YouTube video for the first class. So you'll always have this as reference to see how to go to calendar.google.com and everything. Do uh, you guys understand everything OK? Any questions so far on how to access the Google Classroom or anything? Uh, okay, cool. So uh, this should have been sent to you in an email on how to join. If you don't have that email, what you can always do is the class code is right here. Uh, email me if you have any questions. My email is simple. It's just victorbeltran at oflschools.org. All that stuff's going to show up in any class. I'm showing you the pre-calculus class because that has more things. This has your assignments as well as, where is it? These little books 
with the bookmarks mean it's material, it's usually going to be the link to the YouTube video. So again, I cannot stress how important the, oh, well, I'm on here. Might as well mark Hector here. Uh, it'll have access to all the videos and everything, and it'll keep you on that deadline so you guys know exactly where you're supposed to be in pace with the class. Other than that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start. Uh, the way I teach is through the Adventum thing. We go through the tutorial real quick. We don't do all the activities unless we do have time. I'll try to do as much of the activities as possible on the tutorial. But it's meant to be more of a like summary of the tutorial so you can learn and ask questions about the tutorial. And I use this writing tablet where I'm able to write on the screen. So it's a little easier for you guys to see. And I'll also show you guys how to type in the answers on the equation editor and things like that. So again, this cohort is just meant for you guys are still doing the class independently, but it's meant to be a spot where we can talk about it. And I'm setting a pace for you. So you guys get that extra attention that you don't um, essentially get with your group appointments or your, indivi your individual 15 minute appointments. So let me go back to Algebra 1. So I will always raise this to the top. So even though there's a pacing guide here, uh, this I'm also showing for future people. So this will tell us what module we'll be in for each individual class. So this unit has quite a bit of lessons. So we're going to go through it quite a bit. Um, but unit two has less. Unit three has even less. This review day is meant to, for you guys to come in and then we'll talk about any questions you guys have. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, if you guys don't do the assignments on time, I'm probably going to email you and let and ask like, hey, what's going on? How can I help? Uh, if you don't pass the mastery test the first time, just make it up. Um, I'm going to comment on the assignment. Just do a little comment like, hey, let's make an appointment. We'll go over all the questions you got wrong, why you got those questions wrong, and how we can uh, help with the problem later on. So with that being said, let's get into the actual curriculum. So let me log into Admentum real quick because I'm pretty sure, yep, it always logs me out. All right, and Sabrina. Hey, Sabrina, just make sure next time to try to use your school email. Otherwise, like I have to like admit you into the room and sometimes it there, it just makes it a little harder when you're not using the school email. Um, bah, bah, bah. Let me mark you here before I forget. So let's get into the actual lessons. You guys, I, what I recommend is writing it down on a notebook because it will be kind of hard to try to do it at the same time because you're going to have to keep going back and forth between the meet and me, and that's just going to take too much time. So I do recommend just getting a notebook, asking questions, and just observing instead of trying to answer the questions as I'm doing it. And then, like I said, if we don't have time, it's going to be a summary of the activity instead of doing the actual activity themselves. So let me look myself up because I believe I assigned myself to this class. And if you guys haven't had the class assigned to you, I haven't had the chance to review the roster and add you. Oh, I haven't even added an Algebra 1 class. I was focused on making the Algebra 2 class. But I'll make the Algebra 1 class for you guys. So right now, let me just... Do it. If you guys don't have it assigned, your teachers can assign them to you. But I can also assign it to you as well. So anything your teacher can do, I can assign for you as well. Let's grab uh, lesson one. So I'll just grab. A... Actually, I don't even need this. I just need curriculum. There we go. Uh, if you guys haven't yet, 
seen it. I do have videos on YouTube on how to access Edmentum. Um, again, just email me if you guys need help. I'll put that down later. So right now I have one on algebra tiles because the first activity we do in this uh, unit is going to involve algebra tiles and I go over how to use them. Uh, for OFL distance learning, there's different things like how you can record an audio recording in Inmentum, how to access Inmentum, student emails. So there is quite a bit of playlists for resources for you guys. Uh, do, do, do. Let's get going to the actual lesson though. So unit one is gonna be about expressions and linear equations. So again, guys, you're, this is still an independent class. The cohort is intended to just supplement it. But one thing I do want to say here is always pay attention to the objectives. Um, some of them are worded a little weird. I don't know why algebra gets really picky with using the state standard language. But if you can under read this and kind of try to understand what it wants you to learn from the lesson, it does go a long way than just randomly filling stuff out. Um, so in this case, it wants us to rewrite um, expressions involving radicals and rationals. Rationals is just a fancy way of saying fractions. Uh, radicals is just a fancy way of saying square roots. So that's how they want us essentially to talk about changing radicals and uh, fractional exponents. Uh, interpreting parts of this, so they want us to know what the definition of terms is, what a factor is, what a coefficient is, and understand polynomial structure form analogous to integers. So in other words, it just wants us to know what an integer is, uh, what does it mean by closed under operations. We'll get into that. That just means that if we do addition to a polynomial, that means it's still a polynomial. It's still That's what it means by being closed under. If we do subtraction to a polynomial, it's still a polynomial. If we do multiplication to a polynomial, it's still a polynomial. So anything like that just means polynomial. And polynomials are, let me turn on my pen real quick. Polynomials are anything you'll see like this, where it's like you have your x squared, your 3x plus 2, something, anything with this that involves your variable. And we'll get into how this is a term, how this is a coefficient in a bit. Any questions so far? OK, cool. Don't be afraid to turn on your mics or talk in the chat if you guys do have questions. So moving on over here to the first slide. So the first slide, it's going to tell us, oops, and it gave, has it set up with the answers. It wants us to go over order of operations. So if you guys haven't done order of operations in a while, that's what's known as PEMDAS. I write my PEMDAS a little weird because I want people to remember that multiplication and division happen at the same time, and addition and subtraction happen at the same time. But this is just talking about PEMDAS. So if we're talking about PEMDAS, I don't know why I erased it. All we're going to do is just drag these over the way it is. The P stands for parentheses, so that goes first. E stands for exponents, so that'll go next. Then it's multiplication and division, left to right. That'll go. And then it's addition subtraction. So that's how we would do these drag and drop ones. I do recommend getting a mouse just because I know it's a little challenging to do the click and drag if you're using a laptop. Um, if not, just uh, what I recommend doing when I'm using a Chromebook is click with one hand, but then drag using another finger. It's kind of like a two finger approach. Um, and it makes it a lot easier than trying to like click it with one finger and drag at the same time. So when we're talking about order of operations, again, this is PEMDAS. And you'll see here that these two students are answering the question differently. And the reason for that, I think, when I've done this is one of them decided 
to multiply the nine first before doing the parentheses. And that's where the answers come into play that are wrong. And then we'll like, see why they're wrong in a bit, I believe. So numerical expressions. So when we're talking about numerical expression, uh, all we're talking about is anything that basically doesn't have an equal sign. As soon as it has an equal sign, this becomes an equation. And if we click through here, this is just going to show us how to do it step by step. So we have to do parentheses first, then we have to do multiplication, then we have to, then we can finally add. And the one step it doesn't show here is this positive times this negative ends up being a negative. So positive times a negative is a negative. This doesn't work with the addition rule. A lot of people think like if I have this five uh, plus this, I don't know what happens when we start involving variables, but all of a sudden people start thinking, oh, a positive times a positive and a negative, that's gonna be a negative. When in reality, it's like, no, we have more positive x's then we have negative x's meaning that our answer after we cross out positive for positive and negative with that positive we'll just end up getting three x's uh so moving on again i know it's a little slow at the beginning because it's all review but this does get a little more challenging. So moving on. So let's do this in order of operations. So the first thing I see here when I'm looking at this equation is we're going to do parentheses. Because we can't do anything with the parentheses, we're going to have to do the exponent inside the parentheses first. And then after that, with these parentheses, we're going to subtract. Then from here, I see we're multiplying. And then from there, what they're saying is like, oh, let's do division. Now this division here, whenever you see fractions, guys, I know this is usually like the hardest part of algebra is fractions. Just think of it as division. So think of it as this. This is four divided by two divided by five. So in other words, they want you to divide this two by five first. Or in other words, what you can do is look at this as, you can just flip this over. And what happens here is when you flip over, this just becomes 20 divided by two. So there's a bunch of ways to see this a little differently. This was probably a bad example to do the divided by divided by. But when you have something divided by a fraction, all that is is flipping over and multiplying it. So give me a second, so dividing. So when you're dividing by a fraction, just remember all you have to do is flip over that fraction to make it easier. So this is a big fraction because it's double division, or you can just see it as four times five over two. And then from there, we can get the answer. Is all of this making sense so far? I know a lot of it's review. Um, we're going to get into the definitions. Don't, oops. <laughs> well, we'll just get into the answer right there. <laughs> um, when we get into the definition, guys, don't write them off because definitions are a big part of the test, of the mastery test. So here what's happening is we're going to do everything in the parentheses first. So if I have a negative 2 and a positive 1, I have negative 1 squared plus. I'm going to do all of my parentheses at the same time. And you can do that because we'll get into terms later. But when you have a term, you can solve the terms individually. And the reason for that is since addition comes last, Everything separated by a plus or a minus can be done at the same time in order. So here I'm going to have negative 1 squared. I'm going to have this plus 5 times 4 because 12 divided by 3 is 4 minus 9. So this is 
negative one times negative one, which is a positive one. One thing to note, guys, once we get into variables, negative one squared is not the same thing as a negative quantity one squared. What happens is this one is negative one times negative one. This one is negative one times one. It's small, but it does make a huge difference because this ends up being negative one instead of a positive one. Again, guys, bear with me. I know a lot of it might be review for you guys, but we do get into more complex stuff later. So again, here we're gonna go. So I had that multiplied. So this was one. Now I'm gonna do the five times the four that I had which is 20 minus nine. So in other words, I get this 21 minus nine, which is how I get this 12. And then you guys would submit it from there. So now we're gonna talk about actual algebraic expressions. Algebraic expressions are the ones you'll see with the variables. All right, so from here, we're gonna talk about all of this stuff here. And the beauty of this, guys, is you can always write this down. So an algebraic expression, it's an expression. So what we talked about before, adding, subtracting, multiplying, all that, with at least one variable. And if you don't know what variables is, you can always click this. So variables are always our unknown. So whenever we don't know something, we have to do other things in order to do it. So for example, like if you have x plus one times three, you would have to use the distributive property mainly because since you don't know what the x is, you can't add it. So that's why the distributive property exists. And we're gonna get go over what all of these are and their meanings. So from here, they want the word term. The term is anything separated by addition or subtraction. So this is a term and this is a term. A constant is something without a variable. It's known as a fixed value. I believe this is a question on the test or one of these are. I remember some of, there's a lot of vocabulary in the test. A constant is something with a fixed value, basically meaning it doesn't have a variable. So as long as it doesn't have a letter next to it, that's what's known as a constant. A coefficient is a number in front of a variable. So in this case, they're talking about four because four N is the number in front of it. A factor is anything that can be multiplied. So for example, in a general case, let's say I had something like 36. 36 has a lot of factors as one and 36. Usually we don't talk about these as factors because anything times one is itself. So you don't really need to worry about that. It has two, two and 18, two times 18 equals 36. It has three, three times 12. It has four, let me go back to my pen, four times nine. And it also has six, six times six. So we only count it six one time. So that's what a factor is. Anything that multiplies to get a number. So like terms are anything with the same exponent and variable. So for example, these are not like terms because according to PEMDAS, you have to do this exponent first. Since we can't do the exponent, we can't add these two terms together. They're two completely different terms. This one has a variable, so they're not like terms, so you can't add these together. These have different variables. So they're not like terms. Constants are like terms. Anything with the same variable and exponent are like terms. So different exponents mean they're different variable, different uh, terms. And again, always review your definitions. Uh, am I going at a good pace, guys? Too fast, slow? Let me know in the chat. All right, so here we're going to talk about Good, cool. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So here, what we're going to do 
is just talk about this. So the first term. First term is three. So they're talking about the three. Three itself is a coefficient. Three x itself would be the whole term. X plus two. Well, x plus two, they consider this a factor. The reason being is it's two times x plus two. If it was talking about this whole thing, that would be a term. But because it's only talking about this one thing that multiplies into it, so just because you don't see it, it does mean that there's the multiplication. I'm sure you guys have seen this before. Um, since we are multiplying it, this would be a factor. The whole, the whole product would be 2x plus 4. So a factor of 2x plus 4 would be this, and another factor would be this. So factors apply to expressions as well as um, numbers. And 4, when it's talking about the last term, this is the last term. What is 4? Well, it's a term, but it's also a constant. So that's all they want us to go over, and this will explain it as well. Every time you guys submit it, even if you're right, make sure to read it because odds are this is all involved in the mastery test. And make sure you guys watch the videos on your own. Um, this one, I believe they're just solving it. So they're just using the distributed property. One thing that a lot of students forget, guys, is when you distribute, make sure you take the negative with it. This negative is a part of the nine. It's Think of everything as being separated by a plus. So this is a negative nine. Even though you don't see those parentheses, just remember negative always get distributed with it. So again, guys, you can watch this on your own if you need a refresher on the distributive property. Here, they answered it for us, unfortunately. But usually, in these, it's fine to just put this. Part of the problem, though, is when I'm grading your unit activities, I expect to see the work. So I expect you guys to go into your equation editor and add all of this in. Um, or if you want to submit a picture, you can always submit a picture. That's fine, too. But I expect you to at least show some work, whether it's taking a picture and uploading it or typing in the work. Either way is fine with me. But when we're doing this, we know our answer is this. So let's see how we get there. So we have to distribute because multiplication is key. Normally, we would do parentheses, but these are not like terms, so we can't add them. So we're just going to use the distributed property. So we're going to do 4 minus 8b plus 7b minus 10. I'm going to circle my like term. So here's the like term with that. And here's the like term with this like term. So if I combine these, I have 8 negatives and 7 positives. So I have 1 negative b left over. I have 10 negatives and 4 positives. So I have 6 negatives left over. And that's how we end up getting to this. Everybody good? Again, guys, let me know. Don't be afraid to tell me to slow down if you need me to slow down. But that's pretty much what we're doing here. Multiplying by distributing it. This is basically these first two things right here after I distribute it. And again, if you feel that like you're getting it, but you might need review, remember to always review that YouTube video later. That I'll post. Uh, I'll post in the class. You'll, you'll see it in two places. You'll see it in the stream after this, and you'll see it under classwork as a material. So it'll have this little bookmark thing on it. And I'll even have like a playlist for Algebra 1. Right now, the only playlist here is, again, just that Algebra Tiles video. So going back to here. Now we're going to talk about evaluating these expressions. This usually just means making them smaller, figuring them out. So when we're looking for a total number of hours, 
they're giving this example here. You guys can read it if you want at a later time. But we're basically trying to figure out this formula. We know she's logged on for five minutes. And then she's in there for about four minutes every math problem. So what's happening here is five minutes just to turn the computer on. And then four times X for every problem. And they want to know what's the average for a 60 problem thing. So uh, average, oh, average hours. So we're going to divide by 60 because there's 60 minutes in one hour. So that's why we end up dividing by 60. We're taking those minutes, dividing them out. So it's like, how many hours is she working? So this way we can figure it out for any number. X is our input, our independent variable which is minutes, and y, or I'm sorry, input, which in this case, it's not minutes, it's, um, it's problems. The x represents the number of problems. And y would be the amount of hours it takes her to finish the homework or whatever she's doing in this one. I think this one's a test. There's number of problems. It might just be, oh, homework. It's homework. All right, and then what we're gonna do here, they're talking about assigning variables. This is one thing I always recommend, guys, when you're when we get to those harder problems is stating what X is. X would be number of problems. I know they're using P, but usually you're gonna be using X and Y. Y, what is Y? Y in this case would be hours, doing homework. This just helps you stay organized and then it lets you figure out what the real thing that we're dealing with here. So this is the problem that they're writing. If she has 22 problems, we just plug in 22 for that P. Then we use PEMDAS from there and that will help us evaluate the expression. All right, and then here, we have a different problem. They gave us this, and we have to plug this uh, these two numbers in. So what I recommend when you guys are doing this and you're writing it on paper, always put parentheses where these things, where these variables are. I'm sorry, I keep using the word things. And, uh, it's a really bad habit. But when we're using these variables, uh, I'll, I'll try to make a conscious effort not to say things anymore. So we're using these variables. Plug in parentheses. It just makes it easier because especially if there's a negative, it helps you keep track of is the negative outside, is the negative inside. So if I had something like y equals negative x and I say x equals negative 5, this helps me remember that the negative is part of the problem, but the negative for this five is part of our input. And you'll see that right here. As they're plugging it in, they're plugging it into parentheses for every single one. Where's my highlighter? Even when they're by themselves, I still recommend doing parentheses. It's just a good habit to get into when you're doing algebra. Moving on. And then they're just doing PEMDAS from here, breaking it down with the parentheses, addition, subtraction, multiplication, all of that. And they break it down by step. So you can see that they're doing each parentheses at a time. They're doing all the addition subtraction at one time. This one's kind of weird. I feel this one should go back to parent. Uh, this should go back to division because that's all they're doing. They're dividing. Your remainder stays here. So in case you guys didn't know that, fract since fractions are division, what you can do is something like this. Whatever's left over. This is three. Whatever is left over here, uh, gets put on top of the remainder. So that's an easy way to just do your mixed numbers in case you guys need a review on that. 
All right, so that's how we use PEMDAS to solve the equations. Any questions? You guys doing good? Good pace? Need me to slow down? All right, moving on for right now. I can always go back if you guys need me to go back. So, unfortunately, since I'm a teacher, it always fills in the answer for me. So if we're doing this problem right here, wherever I see an A, I'm going to put this 2. And wherever I see a B, I'm going to put this negative 3. So when I'm plugging this in, I'm going to go parentheses 2 to the power of 3 and then minus, where is it, da, da, da. oh, b. So this is going to be b, which we said was negative 3. And again, it's important to distinguish the difference here. So this is negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. That's what this exponent means. This one doesn't have a negative repeating, so this is just 2 times 2 times 2. If you guys don't have a scientific calculator at home, what I recommend doing, aside from the obvious of buying one, you can just type in scientific calculator on Google. Or actually, I think you can literally just type in calculator. Yeah, you can just type in calculator at Google and it gives you this nice little calculator right here. So. Whenever you're doing your work though, guys, I don't want you trying to type this whole thing in. The reason is calculators are dumb. If you don't plug it in the exact way you want it to, it doesn't understand what you're saying. So I always want you to make sure that you're plugging in it by term. Don't plug the whole thing in unless you've had a lot of practice with it. And even then it's still a risk. So, First thing I'm going to do is this 2 to the power of 3, or 2 times 2 times 2. So that's just a matter of 2 using this xy button, power of 3. We get that 8, because 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 2 again is 8. So I get this 8. And then I'm going to do minus parentheses, negative 3 to the third. Usually I like doing all my exponents, but because it's a negative being, uh, Brought to a power, I'm going to show you guys how to tell the calculator to do that. So you can click here. I like using my keyboard more, but you can definitely click here. I'm going to plug in a negative 3, parentheses. And I like using shift 6 to put the little caret symbol. It kind of, on a keyboard, it usually looks like this. Here's your 6 and here's your symbols, just like with all the other keys, like for example, 5 usually has a percent sign, uh, 4 has a dollar sign. But anyways, this thing causes, is another way of doing exponent. So I'm going to do an exponent to the power of 2. This tells me it's a positive 9. So when I get back to here, this is going to be 8 minus 9. And the reason why it's minus 9 is, oh, I'm supposed to do to the power of 3. I'm sorry, guys. Good thing I caught that one. So parentheses, negative 3, close parentheses, up to the power of 3. That's going to give me negative 27. So that would have been a huge difference there. And because it's negative, the negative still goes there. Now you have a negative negative, so you're going to change this sign to a positive. That's essentially what this negative is doing, just changing the sign. So now we have 8 plus 27 divided by 5. This is going to give us, the way I like to look at it is 5 plus 3 is 8. So 3 plus 27 is 30. So we have 35. This seems weird, but it's basically how Common Core Math is done. It helps me change this to a 30. And then, so the 3 goes away because it was used to make it to 30. Now I have 35. 35 divided by 5 is 7. Is everybody good? Any questions on that one? Yeah. 
Are you guys alive? Are you guys awake? Anybody? <laughs> All right, cool. No problem, guys. I just want to make sure you guys are awake because it is really early in the morning for algebra. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Absolute value. So absolute value kind of looks like parentheses, but all it means is, I like to think of it as distance. You know how you never say something is negative five feet away from me? You always just say five feet. Usually you say the direction, but the idea of absolute value, probably should have used a different color. The idea of absolute value is just a way of saying distance. It's always going to be positive. So think of it as a parentheses that we make everything inside the parentheses positive. So you want to do everything inside the absolute value first, and then you make it positive. So for example, I always use the wrong colors when I need to. So for example, let's say I had x, oops, I meant to put a negative, x minus 2 absolute value. This is not the same thing as x plus 2. What we would do is we would have to plug in something for x first in order to do it. And we'll get into how we get rid of negatives when we're solving for x at a later date. But just remember, you have to do all the work first before you, uh, before you start getting rid of negatives. So in this case, they're telling us we're going to plug in this negative 4. So when we plug in the negative 4, we end up getting this negative 4 minus that. So it's going to be negative 4.5. And then because it's in this absolute value, we're going to see it goes away. So we're going to treat absolute value exactly like parentheses. So this P in PEMDAS can also mean absolute value. I know that looks like an 11 or a 1 in like a parentheses, but I mean it to be for absolute value. And then from there, that's when we can move on to the next steps of multiplication and finally addition. All right, guys. So now it wants us to do this part. So again, the teacher's addition is always going to make me do this, give me the answer. But let's see how they got this. So we have negative 4, parentheses, 5 plus negative 3. This would change into negative 4, parentheses, 5 minus 3, which, as we know, is just 2. So negative 4, parentheses, 2. At this point, since it's already positive, it's not like it changes to a negative. It's still positive 2, but a positive times a negative is a negative. So it's not turning negative because the absolute value changed it. It's just because a negative times a positive is a negative. All right. And the summaries, guys, for any class, not just algebra, always look through these because odds are if it's in the summary, it's going to be on the test. The way your guys' mastery test works are there are 10 questions, and you only get to see five of them. So even if you study and you're like, it wasn't even on my mastery test, it might have been. You just passed before you got to see that problem. So any of this, what a coefficient is, constants, variables, it's all on here. How to do PEMDAS is definitely on the mastery test. Uh, and how to plug in variables as well as um, this stuff. So you can always, I don't know what this is. Oh, here's a little thing where you can, test out how to use variables. Um, you can always click on it. And I believe if you actually click this link, it takes you to the thing. This will kind of get you used to using digital tools, especially once we get into tiles. Um, but other than that, guys, do you guys have any questions? I know you guys have been quiet this whole time. <laughs> All right. Well, that being said, guys, um, do me a huge favor. Make sure you check your student email. It's probably buried in there somewhere um, to join this class. If you guys 
don't have it, um, you can always, I, I want you guys to write this down. This is your class code. What you would do is let's say you wanted to add a class and you couldn't find that email, you would go to classroom, classroom.google.com, enter. You would, let me get rid of my pen. You would go to join class and you would just type in the link to this class. So the link to this class is RC6F4PI. You would hit enter and it would add you to the class. This will help you have access to all the YouTube videos as well as um, know the deadline. So before next class, so I'm going to make it do Tuesday at midnight, or I should say Tuesday at 11.59 p.m. Um, again, do it earlier than that, obviously. But between now and next class, so I don't want you doing it right before class. That's why I make it due Tuesday at 11.59. Um, do the mastery test for this one. So you'll see it on the Google Classroom after this class. Um, it would be, where's the actual curriculum? It'll be this. Do the practice, because you're going to need the practice for it. Go through the practice problems. If you're having trouble with that, that's probably a good sign to, um, to make an appointment with me. The practice is not graded, so at least just get it done. Um, the test itself is. So the expressions mastery test is what's going to be your homework um, before next class. Uh, anybody have any questions on what the homework is, um, how to access Google Classroom, anything? All right, cool, guys. All right, so just make sure to add the Google Classroom. And um, other than that, see you guys on Wednesday. Have a good day, guys.